So I've hunted down some bleeding hearts from a local store in this root form. They've already sprouted. Um, so I don't want them to sweat and die in this bag. So I think I'm going to plant this pink one in this pot where I can control the environment. I'm going to plant these white ones in a more, well, they're both shady areas, but I'm going to pop them over there under the tree where the cat and the dog are heading right now. And I've also got some hostas, which I've already planted over here, but I've got so much shade on this side of the garden that I bought some more and I'm going to plant some more of those, although I may not do all that in this video. But let's get into it. So due to my back injury, I have really neglected this half of the garden and I just focused on where I could plant flowers. When I originally moved in, of course, I had it all uh, manicured and beautiful, but then, you know, it all went to seed, uh, literally. So um, what I want to do is clear it out and plant some hostas and bleeding hearts because I know they will work in this area. And so I've got this pot here and it had a clematis in it, which was just too shady. Now, clematis love shady roots and cool roots, but they actually do like sun on their flowers and leaves. So um, I'm going to take the clematis out of here, clean up this pot. This was in the gap uh, underneath that box tree that I showed you. So I'm going to clear this out of the weeds and whatever, but I am going to leave the ivy, which seems to have self-seeded in here because I didn't plant it in here, some junk. This is the remnants of having young children. They weren't that young, but they were youngish when we moved here. Here's the clematis. Look, you can see that sprouting in the middle so i'm going to find a more suitable home for that sorry about the wobbling and well i'm not going to obviously dispose of the worm that can stay there here's some of my bulbs that you've seen from my bulb haul they're all coming up nicely um so i'm really pleased about that only one set of bulbs actually i'm disappointed about haven't flowered <laughs> i'll mention them in another video so here we are here's the pot um hopefully my filming will improve <laughs> um and so what i wanted to do is just clear out the weeds and just freshen up this compost i definitely am not replacing all the compost the first thing i need to do obviously is to dig out the clematis which i can't even remember what color this clematis is because it's just been so poxy really and also because it's under the trees and in the shade i don't think it was getting enough water and although i did water it obviously look it's still alive i don't think it got all its needs met let's put it that way and i'm typically me i just grab the nearest thing rather than actually getting a trowel and i'm trying not to break the roots look at those roots the roots are pretty good on it so i'm definitely going to save that and um, plant that somewhere else where it will get more sun. So then I'm going to loosen the soil around the area where I'm going to plant the bleeding heart and I'm going to add um, some feed and some extra compost just for, um, you know, to freshen it up, so to speak. Because I think the bleeding heart is a pretty um, robust plant. It doesn't need pampering like so many of the flowers that we grow um the bleeding heart is not really that way inclined of course i'm going to be eating my words aren't i if it doesn't come up but the reason i wanted it in this pot is because i actually want to be able to see it when i'm having my coffee in the morning and this will just be right in my eye view and it also means i can control it because Yes, that's the feed is just fish blood and bone there. Look, I don't know where the camera is. Look how amateur I am. <laughs> anyway, I will work all this out. I promise you my videos will improve. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, so I want, because I haven't cleared the whole area out underneath those trees yet, I wanted to have control uh, over where these plants are popping up. I wanted to know where they're going to be. So I decided that I was going to put this in this pot and then I can have it just um, on the terrace, but just below the box. And that is exactly where I'm facing when I have morning coffee on mornings that are warm enough. <clears throat> so just mixing it in with my fingers and now I've got to get this out. So many of these have sprouted already. 
that I have opened all the bags and left them all outside because they've all been in a hot shop sweating away. So I hope this hasn't impacted them too greatly. And this is a Dicentra spectabilis and um, this one hadn't sprouted I don't think yet. Oh yes it has, look just a little bit. And this only needs planting an inch or so um, below the top level of the soil. So in this case, I'm probably going to work it so that the very tips of the sprout will be just on the surface level, just below the surface level. Um, make sure there's no weeds left in there, of course. And just sort of um, zhush the soil around so that the, the soil gets in around the plant and that there aren't um, air pockets there. And then I'm going to top dress it also with um, some bark chippings just to make it look more attractive. And I don't want to waste the soil, so I'll throw that in. I think that was a bit of rotted off stem, so I hope this is going to be okay there. Just so, uh, to let you know, if you do have blood, fish and bone around, um, the dogs may dig away at the pot, so you probably need to cover it or something. I use chicken wire or um, hard wire, hard cloth as you call it, which I also buy from Amazon. So perhaps I'll bring that pillow for you as well. Um, and I just snip it with pliers into the right shape, right size, and then I bend it over the top just until the plant gets established. Because I find that once the plant is established, the dogs don't bother so much um, digging it up. It's just they can't resist that bare soil. And if there's a, a particularly um, attractive scent to them underneath, then Oh my goodness, I mean, I have lost countless plants to terriers digging them up. So that's watered in and then I'll try and just clean up the pot a bit, um, make it look a bit more attractive and then it's going to sit there. And I think that'll be really nice if that ivy also, um, that's just purely self-seeded ivy. I seem to have a lot of ivy self-seeding all over my garden actually. Uh, so I need to keep an eye on that because it obviously can also be a nuisance. Here's where I planted some hostas and this one has already emerged. I mean, I just can't believe that. But we've had two, I mean, it's the beginning of Fe February, like when I filmed this was you know, like the 3rd of February, it's now like the 4th or 5th. And um, I'm just showing you one there that I forgot. I must have forgotten to plant it and just left it there. So I don't know if that's going to be any good. Um, but that shot up in a couple of days. We had two really, really strong spring-like days. Um, and it just shot up. But these other ones haven't shot up yet. So hopefully that doesn't mean that we're only going to have one. And I'm going to plant the, the yellow. I'm going to put the pot here, the pink dicentra here in this space. I'm going to clear it up. And this is my terrace. And this used to be beautiful. I can't believe, you know, how, um, you know, things just when you can't be at them every day, how, how quickly things deteriorate. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm back on the men now, so let's get this sorted. I'm gonna wash down all this area, but I just needed to get these plants in place really first um, because they're obviously sweating away in this bag. But this, this whole terrace is gonna be cleaned separately because it, well, it's just a separate job. I need to move the furniture and I'll, I'll have to move this pot again obviously and then um, I will give it a good scrub and bring it back to um, some kind of glory. <laughs> um, so don't for any uh, minute think that this is me thinking this job is finished. It's it's not. The whole garden is, is being worked on. So, But that's going to be a really nice view and those hostas are going to grow up behind it. So it's going to have a really nice green background. And then because I'm growing so many more plants this year, I, I'm just trying to get into the habit of labelling everything because I always think I'm going to remember and when it comes down to it, I just never do. <laughs> so I'm going to put the clematis under this a tree and I forget the name of this tree. It's a Chinese tree and it has these lovely winter flowers. They're just going over now. And then in the summer, it has great big sort of um, oval shaped, rugby ball shaped, um, in America, of course, you would call it a football shaped ball and uh, leaves and they're covered in it. So it will be sh it will be shady, but it also is facing the sun. The sun hits it. So I thought the clematis could be shaded. I've got some um, alliums and a peony. That peony I'm probably going to move. 
um, because of the tr it's under the tree so it's just going to get too much shade so I'll move that but I'm, I'm going to put the clematis, clematis in the corner look behind the brick so it will be the roots will be shaded but hopefully it'll have an opportunity to climb through the tree um, and uh, get some sun that way but we'll see how that looks I don't know how that's going to work but I don't want it sort of lying around and um, you know um, suffering and dying because I do want to keep the clematis now that I've bought it it's still alive it's obviously ready to grow um, so we're going to give it another chance over here but first I've just got to take off all these um, uh, winter weeds and what have you a couple of brambles I'm always fighting brambles here um, not because it's an organic garden but because I inherited lots of brambles and they've always been a bit of a battle to get rid of and um, then when my back went obviously I just couldn't deal with them at all and I wanted to get somebody in actually to help me but I just I'm just so protect the last time I got a gardener in to help me he just mowed over all my plants and just pulled everything up and that um, is not what I want in a gardener and um, I, I realized that it people I I don't even know where all my plants are so I don't know how I could expect a gardener to know where they all are so I am a little bit controlling about that in a way so I don't have a gardener at the moment and I should have really got one when my back was sore but anyway never mind here we are now and so I'm just going to put it here because I know the roots will be shaded here but the sun comes in from so from the right of the sorry the left of the screen it will come towards the corner of the brickwork there so that the clematis can climb up through this tree towards the sun and it's just not densely shaded the only reason it's shaded and it doesn't get the sun is because of the brick behind and the leaves when this is covered in leaves it will be shaded so I'm hoping the clematis will have enough time during this winter period to get going because it will get some light and um, it should get rain here so it would be better um, protected from drought than in the pot under the tree in the shade so we'll see we'll see it could just be really weedy clematis I don't know so again I'm just going to enrich the soil add a bit of food and um, I'm going to plop it in and hope for the best no I'm going to, obviously I'm going to water it and take care of it I hope for the best is not really the right thing to say <laughs> all right so it's nicely snuggled into its hole whoa sorry took you on a bit of a spin there um, and I'm going to backfill it now and um, I'm going to cover the roots even so with um, some broken pot and tile because um, although this will be in shade in the summer, which is perfect for the roots. It um, isn't in shade right now, so I don't want the roots to frazzle. So once I've covered this over, I will um, water it and then put these cracked pots on it. So I'm not sure if I explain myself properly about clematis. Clematis like the sun, most of them, but their roots and the base of the plant hate the sun. So you have to figure out a way of keeping the roots cool and, you know, well watered, not rotting though, they don't want to be rotting in standing water. And one of the ways you can do that is um, to cover the roots um, with um, pots, crop pots, broken tiles like I've just done there. And of course, once the leaves come, that will protect this lower part of the plant, but give the upper part the growing part of the plant the opportunity to reach up to the sun oh she's so cute so this patio obviously needs uh, replacing i'm going to put actually just gravel on top of it and there's the other view of all that so this lovely box and a bay there and all this undergrowth where i want to plant all these posters and bleeding hearts um, I've tried anemones here, I've tried all sorts and nothing really takes off well but I hadn't tried hostas or bleeding hearts um, so let's give that a go and although I do want um, 
you know my garden to be organic and more natural i'm not hugely bothered about things being super manicured um but i do want it to look attractive which it kind of doesn't look that great at the moment let's face it so there we go so i will crack on with my jobs and um see you in my next video thanks for watching bye